Hey, what's up YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. We're gonna come at you with a tool video. It's been a while, it's been a minute, and honestly, I love having this shop, but as many of you maybe know, I moved away and I don't live here, so getting back here on my Saturdays and Sundays to shoot a tools day is not always super convenient for my personal and family life. But the good news is I'm working on a new space at my house in my current garage where I can do these tools day videos uh, instructional videos, maybe like behind the scenes of a, running a business, whatever that type of content that I used to shoot here more regularly, I'm hoping to do um, in the near future. So I'm working on that space. I'm gonna have a video uh, series or at least a video on building that space and making it ready for the videos. So I'm excited, stay tuned if that's something you're interested in. But today we're gonna talk about the Milwaukee Nibbler. Now you guys probably saw some of my shorts. I've been using this for about a month now. On the current build, we've exclusively used this nibbler, so I think I have a good feeling as to what I think about it. So let's go through the specs, and then we can talk about this tool specifically, and maybe how it compares to my other two battery-powered nibblers, the Metabo and the Makita. This is the Milwaukee 16-gauge nibbler. This is gonna be available, actually, September 8th. So as of right now, if you're watching this video, it's not September 8th. Check the link down below. You can go pre-order this from Acme Tools. They have a ton of different options. So if you just want the tool only, that's the kit I got, and you already have some of your own M12 batteries and chargers, you can do that, and it's only gonna be 229 bucks. Now, if you wanna get the full kit, it's 328. That's gonna come with your battery, your charger, and the tool, and I think a bag. Also you get the chip collection bag, which we'll talk about. So they call this a 16 gauge nibbler because it's rated for 16 gauge mild steel and it will cut up to seven feet per minute. Now it might not seem like a ton, but I can promise you it's a pretty dang good uh, spec. After using a bunch of other nibblers on the market, this one is pretty fast. You're also gonna be able to cut 22 gauge spiral duct seam, 18 gauge stainless, 12 gauge aluminum. You know, you're gonna cover a lot of those sheet goods and metal that you're gonna use on a typical job site and this is gonna be able to cut through it. One of the really cool features I like about this is that depending on the orientation that you like to cut or the situation you're in, this version, you do not have to have a tool to change the die. So you can actually rotate this 360 degrees. There's some positive stops every 90 degrees so that if you wanna cut straight, I'm a left cutter, so I always cut from my right towards my left, uh, but you can put this in whatever orientation you want and then just hand tighten it. These other brands that I've had, you have to have a tool, a wrench, uh, and it's just not nearly as easy. The other cool thing is this has a light. I know, seems crazy. Why do we need an LED on your tool? When you're cutting darker steel, it's hard to see your pencil marks or whatever you're using to mark up your steel. And that light makes a huge difference. A lot of times we're in unfinished spaces where maybe the lighting is not as good as if you're working outdoors. And that LED light does come in handy. So nice bonus uh, for Milwaukee doing that. I do appreciate that. Right here, you're gonna notice a variable speed. So you've got a rotating dial here and you can dial it all the way down. It's gonna be pretty slow. And honestly, I usually just run it at automatic and I let the tool decide when it needs uh, or it senses the maybe the lack of torque or I'm pushing it hard and it's really starting to slow down or bog down, it ramps the tool up automatically. That's a feature that Milwaukee has been putting in a lot of their tools. Their oscillating tool I know has it and it's great. Some of their sanding tools. So it's a cool little feature. You know, sometimes I'll be honest, I also just put it in five and just run it as fast as possible because time is money. But the reason for a uh, dial to get it way dialed down is sometimes you're gonna be doing that delicate work. You're gonna be cutting something that you wanna be really precise. You can dial it down, flip your switch, and now you don't have to hold a trigger. Uh, you can just concentrate on making your cut. Now, if you've never used a nibbler, uh, we're gonna do some demos in a little bit. It has a punch and a die, and basically it's going in and out super fast, and every time it goes back into this uh, die here, it's gonna make a little punch out, and that's gonna make your cut, right? So it's not cutting a straight single line, it's actually taking out a chunk of material, and what that does is it ejects out the bottom. And I've showed this before, if you've seen my feed, that makes a big mess. And if you've used one of these, then you know that you do not want to be working where you're cutting and then walking somewhere that matters because you'll get these little shavings in your shoes and then it's a pain. Sometimes they'll even work into your shoe and get into your foot. Milwaukee's got this nice little, I call them niblets because they're just little niblets. It's a nibbler and it's got a little chip collection bag that actually goes right over the top. And as you're making your cuts, it's gonna fill up. Pretty darn cool, and I will show you just how relevant this is and why it does make 
sense and is a big issue to have something like this little tiny chip bag. So that is the tool. Seems basic because it is. It is very simplistic. It has one job and that is to make your job easier. Less fatigue on your arms or hands by making cuts. It's a nice clean cut as you will see versus using something like a circular saw to cut through your metal. Sometimes I understand that that's gonna work. But this right here, guys, is an epic tool to have in your tool chest. Let's go ahead and get a battery. Let's do some demos, and then I'll show you a little bit of how it really excels over these other versions that I've been using for the last six, seven, eight years. All right, guys, so first off, this is a piece of a 26 gauge. This is like what we would use on our buildings um, for flat coil stock, garage door headers, things like that, right? Trims. Um, and that's not really what this tool is made to cut. Yes, you can do it as I'm gonna show you, but we're gonna show you cutting through rib steel, which is really where I think a nibbler comes uh, into play. First off though, let's just assume that I'm gonna use my snips. These are Midwest Offset Aviations, and I'm gonna make a nice cut, and I'm just gonna try to go fast, but I'm also going to try to um, you know, just cut straight. So I'm just gonna make a straight line here just for a visual and we're gonna go ahead and try to cut this, okay? Okay, so I just made the cut, right? It's no big deal, this is a straight piece of metal. You can do it pretty fast, and if I'm cutting with my nibbler, which I'm gonna put this on to reduce some of this, uh, some of the you know debris getting everywhere. I don't know, I didn't time the two, but it's not that slow. The big benefit that you're gonna get from using a nibbler in this application is the cleanliness of the cut. It might not be as perfectly straight. I think you can take your time with the, the snip, slow it down, get a really nice straight cut. You can do that with the nibbler if you also slow it down, but the benefit to the nibbler is the way that it makes the cut is a very clean cut and it's not sharp. You don't have these little micro jags that you do get sometimes when you're snipping. If you're not perfectly straight, there can be little jags and then you catch your fingers on it and that's when you get your micro cuts. If you're not wearing gloves, which you should be wearing gloves. So that's like the benefit of you being, using a tool like this, but I would recommend anytime you're making straight cuts just to use a single cut or double cut shear. That's what they are made for and they work really well and are very efficient as well. Really where this comes into play and where the nibbler is king is cutting something like this. Now this is 29 gauge high rib steel. This is what we use on a lot of our buildings. So it's not even a very thick steel. We will get into some thicker steel here. But if I'm cutting over these ribs, if I've got to make this cut, Now, as soon as I get into this, what you're gonna notice is that it's very hard to get up and over these ribs with very good clean cuts. Now you enter in the nibbler. It goes up and over these ribs with no effort, and it's a very nice clean cut that I can actually run my fingers on without fear of those little areas where your snips are trying to go up and over these ribs, uh, leave little, little just knives sticking out ready to cut you. Uh, the nibbler is gonna do a very good clean job. So I've actually done a video where I talk about the different types of metal cutting tools. This video is more about this Milwaukee nibbler and why I think it's a great addition to somebody's tool trailer or workshop if you ever have to cut any sort of metal just because it works really well. Now the first thing that I noticed when I look at this compared to let's say my Metaba, which is used to be our go-to, ergonomically, it only took us like one day of using this Milwaukee nibbler to realize that we would probably never use one of these again unless we needed to in an emergency, like we didn't have any Milwaukee batteries available or something. Because ergonomically, when you pick this up and you put this in your hand, it is so much more comfortable than holding this or specifically holding the Makita. I'm not sure why, but in terms of comfort, you can see how much smaller this is 
your hand fits around it, and it is so much less fatigue to hold this and make cuts than it is either of these. They're also way, way heavier. You can clearly see that the battery platform is way different. This is a little bit taller than the Metabo, but it's very short, it's very skinny, and it weighs a ton less. I don't know the exact weight difference. It doesn't matter. It's more of a feeling thing, and when you pick up a tool, you want it to feel good, right? So above and beyond the ergonomics, you want it to perform well. Uh, listen to the noise of these different tools. much quieter, much less vibration, overall a much more pleasant tool to operate. The other thing I noticed is that it, I don't have a, a measuring device to exactly measure it, but the depth or the, the opening for where your material can go into is slightly bigger on the Milwaukee. And what I noticed was that when I'm going over ribs of steel, it actually is way less effort, specifically when you're going on an angle. So when you're cutting straight across your steel, it's pretty easy. But when you have to go on like a 45 degree angle, it is quite daunting sometimes to get a nice clean cut and to stay straight. The Milwaukee makes it very easy. So enough about, you know, these comparisons. Listen, I don't, I'm not dogging these brands here because I've actually used them for a long time and they've built us a ton of buildings and allowed us to do our job efficiently, much more efficient than using something like this, much cleaner and I think better for our client than running a circular saw through these panels, creating metal shavings everywhere. So these tools are great. If you are, if you are on these platforms, you do not want to get into an M12 platform, even though I would argue one battery or one kit is probably gonna do you plenty. You don't need multiple, multiple batteries. I almost cut like all the exterior walls on our, our first building with one uh, M12 4.0 battery, and that's the truth. So battery runtime is amazing. In fact, I brought this little guy right here. So this is the next thing we're gonna talk about. One, battery life is amazing, but two, this little chip collector right here, Okay, I've made a couple cuts, and I took this Pazload nail box that was empty, and I've been saving all of these shavings from the building that we're working on currently. This right here, all of these shavings were with the new Milwaukee Nibbler. By having that little chip bag that I thought was kind of a dumb thing, I know other people had some options for chip bags. I think one of these have a chip bag collector or something but it was never really marketed. I never used it until this Milwaukee that shipped with the chip bag, right? I mean, this accessory came with the tool. All of these little shavings of metal on every job I've ever done are somewhere in the ground because it's impossible to continually pick these up. We do run a magnet a lot of times and we do our best, but these things end up in your shoes. Good Lord, I hope they didn't end up in anybody's feet, in dog's feet. When I think about it, it kind of makes me a little bit sad and mad at myself. But I, I wanted to, when I first emptied the chip bag, I was like, I need to put it somewhere. And then I seen how much come out and I'm like, dude, I'm gonna save all of the chips from this job and just see really what it equates to. And I, I bet you this is five pounds of metal chips that we saved from going into the dirt. And it's just as easy as adding this little chip bag at the bottom of your tool. It never gets in the way. It's super easy. Uh, so good on Milwaukee for putting this in the bag. I think it's a great idea. And like I said, these might have them. I've never seen them and I've never used them, but um, I've seen some cool DIY tricks with like pop bottles and stuff. But anyway, that's a great addition. I just wanted to throw that out there. I've got some 16 gauge mild steel. Let's see how it cuts. I think it's 16, 16 gauge mild steel. Uh, let's, let's see what it can do. I don't know, I don't pretend to know my steel that great. I've never been a welder, a metal worker. I mean, I do light metal skinned exteriors, okay? That's my extent of my metal knowledge. But this says right on it, uh, 16 gauge. Let's just see if we can cut it. I hope I don't ruin my nibblers, but worst case, I can buy a new punch and die. I don't know the prices yet because I haven't seen the prices on those kits. Let's go ahead and, oh, you know what? Let's leave it on auto so you can hear it ramp up. Nope. Okay, dude, that was actually impressive. That was pretty quick and quite effortless. Let's run the Metabo through there. It, 
does it, let's run the Makita. So all three of them do it, but hands down that Milwaukee is fast. And you might be saying, Kyle, there's a brand new bit or punch and die. Dude, I just cut hundreds of feet of, uh, of metal here with this, this punch and die. It is not brand new now. And we replaced this one not that long ago. And this one also, I don't think was too long before we shelved it. Like I don't, I don't run my punch and die to the bitter end. Like I want efficiency. So I try to keep these pretty darn good. So I'm not trying to pull any wool over anybody's eyes. So that's 16 gauge, dude, that's pretty sweet. I'm not gonna be taking my, uh, my Midwest snips and getting very far, very fast, even though I can do it. Ah. Whew. I probably just ruined those snips, but it, it will work. But this right here, guys, look at that. That, that all come from these guys and all the cuts I made with the Milwaukee are right there. If you aren't cutting metal and you just want a pretty cool tool, maybe you're gonna wanna check these out. Like I said, they're on pre-order. If you are in the business of doing metal roofing, metal siding, you're doing post frame like I do, uh, you're an HVAC guy, you do a lot of tin knocking, this tool is gonna save you so much. A couple hundred dollars is literally a drop in the bucket for a tool that is gonna save you a ton of effort. It's gonna do a good clean job. It's just a joy to you. So Milwaukee did a great job on this. Uh, I told the story before when I was up at their MPS show, which is their new product symposium back in 2019, I was talking to one of their product managers, Cole, and he says to me, Kyle, what is like the one tool? If we were to go out and start making a tool today, what would it be? And I was like, dude, you guys need to make a nibbler. Three years later, here we go, it's right here. So I like to always say that, you know, I sparked Milwaukee's interest in this, but I didn't find out until just a few months ago that when I talked to Cole that day about making a nibbler, they were already in development and thinking about, you know, how to make a good nibbler. And I really think they did a good job. Some people were complaining about the 12 volt or the M12 uh, platform. Dude, like I said, I ran this and I ran all the exterior metal on a 72 by 96 where we had to cut up all the gable end. We had to cut out all of our windows around all of our doors with this tool on one battery before it died. That is impressive. But anyway, I feel great about getting out here and talking to you guys about tools. I love tools, you know that. I've got this epic tool giveaway that is so close to being done. And one of you lucky subscribers is going to take home, actually, I'm gonna deliver an epic pile of tools. So don't miss out on that. Make sure you're subscribed so you can catch the live where we're gonna feature those top videos that I chose from that giveaway and then find ourselves the ultimate winner. Uh, and I'm gonna get out of here, guys. I hope you had a good one. Uh, let me know if you use a nibbler. Have you um, seen the benefit of it? Are you going to go ahead and pre-order one of these or get one? Uh, let me know down below in the comments and I'll catch you guys on the next video.